1495, Captain Crunch tamed the Crunch Islands in the name of breakfast-based capitalism. Weigh anchor! Hoist the mizzen! Polish the jib! Reset the router! This was the most welcome sight to early sailors, land. Ships would seldom dare sail out of sight of land. Yeah, you never know when you're going to need to conquer or exploit something. But during the 1400s, better ships and changing conditions in Europe sent sailors to sea in a bold, venturesome spirit. That's one way to put it. Land over the distant horizon became the object of search, the goal. Land ho! Put on your shoes and grab your ice cream money! Now back to Blackadder 2 on A&E. The 1400s were busy, thoughtful times in Europe. Men and women were faced with new opportunities to better themselves. The increasing demand for skills and products brought money. Books could now be in the hands of all who were eager to learn. Sniglets were available to everyone. During this period of awakening known as the Renaissance lived Christopher Columbus. Director of Bicentennial Man? Books by such men as Marco Polo, Aristotle, and Ptolemy, a Greek geographer whose maps showed the world with a curved surface with water separating Europe and Asia. The water was blue! Like many during the Renaissance, Columbus grew up with a strong curiosity about the world. As a boy in Genoa, he had been fascinated by the yarns and the sights of the busy harbor. As a young man, he had gone to sea on trading voyages representing an Italian banking house. Sounds ominous, but okay. But the prosperity of Genoa and its rival seaport Venice was threatened by the cutting off of trading routes to the east by warring Turks and also by the increasing interest in trade and exploration in the countries facing the Atlantic. Get to the America so part! Columbus, eager for opportunity and adventure, moved west to Lisbon, the capital of Portugal. That's called trivia. His move to an exploring nation facing a challenging ocean, his continued interest in books and maps, and the clues he saw washed ashore during a visit to Madeira, all helped to inspire his great dream, the dream of sailing west to Asia. His ignorant, misinformed, stupid, harmful dream. As he sought support, some people were intrigued by his well-considered reasoning. Others turned their backs in disbelief, mocking and ridiculing him. <laughs> but it was a royal court that Columbus had to convince. Only from a monarch could he get the authority and money for the expedition. So he started hanging out in king bars. Three kings rejected him. His only hope was Spain. So he moved there. Uh, hola, Senor For King. For six years, Columbus pleaded before Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand and waited with fading hopes. Spain's main interest was to defeat and drive the Moors out of Spain. You mean the Moors? the country. Finally, a great national victory. The McRib was back. After 700 years of foreign occupation, here the Spanish monarchs ride out to demand the surrender of the Moors. The year 1492. Ooh, I got prequel Isabella chills. Is now free to look outward towards the Atlantic. A discovery of a new route to the east might help us match the prosperity of Portugal. Why not give this ambitious dreamer a chance? Because it will lead to the creation of New Jersey? Columbus had his answer. His fleet was made up of three ships, none much bigger than a modern tugboat. Doot, doot. Soon underway with only 88 men were the Nina, the Pinta, and the captain's ship, the Santa Maria. It's Chris Coe Cruz crazy. But before long, the many stories of the unknown ocean began to work on the imaginations of the crew. Fear of the strange creatures, the devastating storms, it's a Pink Floyd video. the endless drifting into darkness, perhaps never to return. Then they ran out of snacks. All made for a frightened, mutinous crew. Yet Columbus pressed westward. The world's not going to colonize itself, people. Then, grab the guns and Bibles. Silhouetted against the sky, there it was at last. The island of Tortuga. Hours later, this was the scene that ended the weeks of searching and centuries of thought. Nice day for an invasion. With banners waving, leading his once doubtful crew, Columbus claimed for Spain the island he named San Salvador and promised God to spread the Christian word among the natives. I'm sure the natives will be thrilled. This is the route the little fleet had taken from Spain, stopping briefly at the Canary Islands, then the brave voyage west. San Salvador was only a small primitive island, so the search continued for the gold and the cities mentioned by Marco Polo. On WhatsApp. In Cuba, natives wearing only small gold ornaments told of richer lands to the southeast. The fleet sailed on to explore Haiti before heading homeward, taking advantage of favorable winds and currents. Mm, stranger tides. Columbus and his crew, believing they had discovered a western route to Asia, were welcomed back to Spain as heroes after their seven-month adventure. 
Everyone was eager to try out all the new diseases they brought but back. But there was some disappointment that all Columbus could present to their majesties were a few natives that he misnamed oh Indians. Oh my god. Some birds, colorful feathers, and gold trinkets. That is not okay! At least there was no mistake that land had been reached. And human beings enslaved. As Columbus knelt to receive the blessing for a second voyage, 1,500 eager adventurers were about to leave with him. They wanted more of those delicious His birds. The unleashed great excitement in Europe, and especially in Spain, where the recent triumph against the Moors left people free from war, restless, and in a mood to conquer new fields. Yeah, colonialism's just a fun hobby, that's all. While Columbus sought in vain for the cities of Asia on this and two other voyages, Opportunists followed upon his discoveries with an unrestrained lust for fortune. Oh, and Columbus was just reading meters? Come on. Columbus, not long after, died poor and unnoticed. His achievement forgotten in the rush. I'm dying in a rush. Meanwhile, on the holodeck... As she went about transplanting a Spanish culture that has left its mark to this day, Spain's conquest turned her almost overnight into a world power so strong that the Atlantic became almost her private highway to the New World. Yeah, how'd that work out? Would other nations, prodded by the envy of returning boatloads of wealth, would they dare challenge Spain's domination of the New World and the ocean leading to it? I assume you'll be covering the moral failures of exploration and conquest in the next episode? Or not? Thanks, Spain, I guess. Thank you for watching. Fun with Shorts is made possible by Patreon and viewers like these. For as little as a dollar per video, you can see early and exclusive Shorts. Also, please check out the newly updated funwithshorts.com for the latest video downloads, DVDs, and, at long last, merch! Okay, that's the end. Bye!